Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking With Me, and this is what we're going to make today. Some little mini journals. I'm going to use up some scraps that I have. So I've got my scrap bucket over there. It's too big to bring in camera. And I've got scrap paper, scrap material, the whole nine yards. So that's what we're going to make. And we're going to be using up some junk mail flyers. These are those flyers that you get in the mail. All kinds of junk. This is just a cover for that leather book weight that I got. That makes a really good cover. This is just off of this box. This was a little box that something come in. I don't know what. And I just cut it down and made it into a cover. You can also use these that your pens and pencils come in. They make a really good cover. I think, let's see, this one is that. And then this one is this. And then this one I made from a flyer, just one of these little flyers here. And then on the inside, all I did, this is tied with some seam binding. And I just decorated the front a little bit on them. And then on the inside, I used scraps again. Just any kind of scraps that I had laying in my stash. This is some old book page, some tissue paper. Uh, that's actually some wrapping paper some old um, this is some old old paper I don't know what kind it is someone sent me a package that was wrapped in that this is an old ticket or cash register ticket and then this is wrapping paper this is something that I used for a drop cloth to stamp on and just things like that anything you have in your stash that you can use for your signatures this is an old piece of parchment paper that has been dyed so, and then I put two signatures in here and I stitched them in. You don't have to do that. You can, you know, put elastic around them and hook them in that way. Or you can just glue the front page and the back page down, sew them together. You can do it, it any way you want. I just went ahead and stitched mine in. Um, and this, I have one a little bit larger than the other one and that's okay. You don't, they don't have to be the same size. This is a little junk journal, so... Just use up all of that, all of those things that you have in your stash. I'll show this one. This one we decorated like that. I put a little bit more on this one. And I cut the edges on this one with my pinking shears. And then this is the inside, just some old paper. Same thing, old paper that I had in my stash. And I just cut most of them with the pinking shears. So anything that you have that you can use up, that's what you put in these. And then I stitched around this one. Uh, I did stitch around this one too. Well, I guess I stitched around all of them. This one I made from a, the flyer. And this one's going to go with my winter journal that I'm making. And I tidy it with two pieces of seam binding. Put some little trim here and a little piece of bling. Just some scraps that I had in my stash. One of you guys had sent me this, and I thought that went well on there. And then this one's just got one signature that I sewed in. So it's just sewn in there. And again, this is all scraps. See? All scraps. They don't have to be perfect. This is a little junk journal. It can be anything. That's tissue paper. Just what I had in my stash. So, and I think they're super cute. Okay, let's get into making one of these covers and then covering it with some scraps. I think I'll make another out of this. I, I enjoyed this one. This is just the right thickness. But, like I said, you can use your old boxes. Anything that is a little bit of a chipboard. It doesn't have to be very thick. You can also use this. So I'll probably use this for one too. Not sure if I'll do that one or that one. This one has kind of a thick spine, and then this one would be maybe a one and a quarter or one inch thick. So, whatever you have in your stash. Let's cut this one down. I think I want to make it, um, let's see how tall it is. It is three, about three and a quarter. <clears throat> so, I don't want to make it too wide this way. Let's see, I think I'll cut it down to three and a half, maybe. 
I'm not sure what size I cut that other one, but they don't all have to be the same size. And these make perfect little gifts. Or if you want to give them out for, like if you're selling something and you want to include them in one of your sale items, you can do that. Okay, and then I can make another one out of that one. It'll be a little narrow one, but that'll be fine. It doesn't have to be big. Now on something like this that's attached, what I do is just go ahead and if it has a place to pull it apart, I pull it apart. And if it doesn't, then I just trim it. This one has a little place to pull apart. Now, if your material here is not very thick, you could fold this in and, and glue it. But mine's pretty thick, so I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to trust my cutting today. I'm going to try to use my trimmer. Trim that off. And then you're going to trim this other little flap off. So there is the cover of your little booklet. And now what we're going to do is see. I think on this one, um, I think I might put material on this one on the outside. And then on the inside, I might cover it with something else. I'm going to grab my little nonstick mat piece that I have here. And this is a, you, the mat. Our nonstick craft mats are huge. This is just an old one that I had and it had a hole in it so I cut it. I actually cut the hole in it so I cut it down and I'm thinking I might use this little piece. I love koala bears so I thought this was a little cute piece of material. don't know where I got it. One of you guys probably sent it to me but I thought I would use that and get this one on there. I think he's super cute. All right. I'm going to use my PVA glue but you can use whatever type of glue that you choose. I'm just going to use this and then I will stitch around this so it doesn't have to be glued perfect. So I probably won't even glue it all the way up to the edges. I will just glue in the middle. Now make sure that you glue the spine real well. You want that to stick well. My PVA glue is trying to clog on me. I'm going to have to clean out the tip. I probably left it open a little bit too much. And then we're going to use one of our silicone tools to just spread this glue out. Alright, we've got that spread out pretty well. And then we're just going to place our material down. I want to make sure that I get his little face on there. Okay. And I'm not going to worry about that little wrinkle in there because once we get everything done, it, the wrinkle will eventually go away. Because we will put this under something heavy tonight so that it'll sit. And I'm going to go ahead and trim right at the edge. You can lap the material over if you want. I'm not going to do that. But you can. So there is our little, and I'm just going to fray these edges probably too. So I'm not going to worry about if everything is perfectly straight. Isn't that cute? I don't think we'll need very much on the front of this one to decorate it up. Okay, then on the inside, we're just going to cover it with some paper. So I'm going to grab some paper that kind of goes with this, and we're going to cover it. Okay, I have a couple of choices here. I think I'll use this one. I think that goes better than the blue blue. This is just out of my scrap bucket. So I, on this, I'm just going to use my art glitter glue. Again, I'm not going to go all the way to the edge because there's no need since I'm going to stitch. I'm just going to make sure that I get a good application right where it's going to bend in the spine because if you don't it may crack or you may get a bubble so just make sure you get a good application right in that spine now I didn't I came back a little bit here but that's okay because we're going to ink that all right now we need to let this dry a little bit and then I'm going to stitch around it and when I stitch, I'll pull on this. I'll make that wrinkle come out. And then when I put it under my little book tonight, it'll 
make the wrinkle pop out of there. But I'm I'm going to let it dry, stitch around it, and then I'll come back and show you some of the inserts that we will be putting in. While that one is drying, let's go ahead and cut another. And I'm going to cut one out of this box. And I'll, I'm just going to cut it and show you how I go about that. And then you can find things around your house that you can repurpose too. Uh, let's see, this one... Let's cut it at four, maybe. Yeah, I think that'll work. And then what we need to do is open this up. I was trying to see if there was an edge, but it's not, and that's okay. Yeah, there is right here. We need to open this up. Now we need to cut this off, so let's do it with a trimmer, Edith. I love to cut, but until I can get some better eyes, I'm going to have to use the trimmer. Okay, cut that off, and we're going to cut this side off. Come on, go under. go and then you're just going, going to cut these little pieces off right here okay now you have a little journal cover isn't that neat so there is a journal cover out of that one and it will be uh, about three and a quarter by four so that's a good size and then let's do one out of let's take this Verizon piece you know the Verizon's always sending me junk mail want me to do this or do that this one was actually folded the wrong way but we're gonna fold it like that now you could leave it this size which is five and a half by six if you want to leave it that size or you can cut it down and I think this one let's see I think I might leave it that size and then all you need to do is just stitch your signature in or you can sew it on the sewing machine just like you normally would any other journal okay let's see what else we can make one out of okay let's just do this one now this piece is just an old little uh, box that we got something in. I have no clue what. Now I'm trying to see if there's a place to open it up. I think this box was made, there we go. Start to say I thought that box was made solid but evidently not. Okay. Now this I've already cut a piece off of so as you can see it's just pieces left and that's okay we can use them. Recycle. Uh, we're going to cut this off right here. Oops. Now, I, I have seen these many, many places online. Natasha and I don't know, there was a couple other ladies that had made these. There's a ton out there. Just, if you want to find any of them, just plug in uh, mini junk journal something like that this one I'm gonna have to cut and they'll pop up all over the place and there everybody makes them a little bit different and that's fine I'm making mine different than everybody else so it doesn't matter okay now that's kind of a long one I really don't want one that long it's gonna have a wide spine so I'm gonna cut this down to four I think I'm gonna put my little seam right there I'm going to cut this off. I'll save that for a little tag. Put 
that up at four and trim that off. Now, that's a good size right there. So then all you have to do, you can stitch your signatures in. You can put elastic around and just put the signatures in with elastic. Anything that you want to do. And this is going to have kind of a wide one. So three signatures would be really good in this one. So there is that cover. So you can make covers out of just about anything. And these flyers make fantastic little journaling cards or tags, anything like that. So I save all of these, put them in a little folder, and when I get ready to make a tag, I make them out of those. All right, this is our little cover. I think it's dry, so let's go ahead and do our bending here. And I just use my bone folder and make sure that I don't have any wrinkles or anything that pop up in my paper on the inside so there we go isn't that cute and I will put lace or something around the edges I don't think I want to I'm not going to cover him so I'm just going to put lace around the edges so this is how I go about choosing what goes into my little journals I just choose a paper that's thin uh, this is ledger that's like I said, what I my drop cloth for stamping. This is a digital digitals. That's an old piece of wallpaper that's very thin. Digital book page is really good to go in there. Digitals. Uh, that's a paper someone sent me, and it's really really thin, but I like it. Parchment paper, wallpaper, digital. So you see, I just grab different things that are thin. You don't want to put anything real thick in these. That is actually some um, newspaper print paper. Just a p old piece of scrapbook paper that's very thin. My drop cloth again. That's wrapping paper. Wrapping paper. Digital and wrapping paper. So that's how I choose it. And then I just cut a little template and I go by that and just lay my pieces on there and tear them real quick. Now I want these pages trimmed with my little pinking shears, so I just put the ends together and trim them off. Now if you want any stitching or anything like that done on any of these pages, you need to do it now because it's really too hard to <laughs> after you get it in your little journal. Okay, I'm going to separate these out to two different signatures, and we'll probably put this one in using the elastic. Okay, I have my signatures stitched, and what we're going to do now is put four little holes in here. I'm not going to try to do it the traditional way because this is so tiny, but I'm just going to show you the way I am going to do these. First off, I'm going to try to mark with my pencil where I want these little holes. Okay, we're going to put our holes pretty close to the edge. So I'm going to come about right there and right there and then up here we'll go there and there maybe. And the, I don't know, these may not be straight and if they're not, you know what, we can put trim over them or something. Just eyeballing it. Okay, so cut that little piece off. So there's one hole, and then down here, we're gonna do the same thing. Probably, it's probably the same thing, <laughs> real, for real. Oh, Lord. There we go. You can always cover anything with lace to cover up mistakes and errors. Don't worry about that. Now I'm going to put some little eyelets in here, I think. And I think these blue ones might be too dark. Let's see. Mm, they'll work. Let's put these little blue ones in there. Now, my elastic is very, well, it's pretty thick. I need a thinner, but all I have is this thicker, so that's what we're going to use. Okay. 
All right, there are our eyelets. Now, someone asked me, how do you get eyelets in without tearing, squishing, squishing this down and making it crooked and all that? As soon as you feel that eyelet catch, as soon as you feel that first little click, stop. If you keep pressing, you're gonna, you know, bust them open on here or you're gonna bust them back here. So there's our front. This is the elastic that I have and this is 0.07 is 2 mil. It, like I said, it would be better if it was a little bit thinner, but this is all I have and this is what I'm going to use. To put your elastic in the way that I do it, you're going to go down through that little hole, back up through that hole, up to the top, back through here. It's been a long time since I've done this. <laughs> and then this one you're going to tie. Now, I don't pull it too tight, because if you do, it's going to make your little book warp. Let's see. Pull it a little bit tighter. And I just put my knot kind of up there at the top. Maybe that's tight enough. I think so. And then you can put a little drop of glue on your knot, and it'll keep that from coming out. And then all you're going to do with your little covers is decide which one you want to go in the front. Slide it in here. Like that. And then slide the one in the back in. Let's slide it in this way maybe. Slide the one in the back in. So there's our front. And that will be in the front right there and then there's the back one so there's two little signatures in there maybe you can see that and these can be taken out and something else put in but like I said if you had a little thinner elastic it would be better but this is gonna work it will work now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open this up to the center And then I'm going to put this trim around it. I think it goes good with his little nose. So I'm going to put this trim on here. Okay, so there is our trim around that one. Isn't that cute? I love that. Okay. Now, while that is drying, I'm just going to find some little word or something to go on there. And I don't think I'm going to cover any of this. I think that's okay. All right, I, I'm going to use this Tim Holtz sticker. I can get it off of here. Mine are pretty old. And it says, Own Your Dreams. And I think he's dreaming, so that's what we're going to use. Cute. Oh, I love that one. Isn't that cute? Do we need some little number or something up there at the top? What do you think? Nope. I don't think that'll work. Okay. All right. I think that's all I'm going to do to that little guy. It's just that right there. We're going to let all of that glue dry. And you could go ahead and put a pocket or something on the inside if you wanted to. But there is that little mini journal. And now we'll get into making these other ones. And I'll show you exactly how each one is made. Okay. I think I've got these together about like I want them. And what I'm going to do is just kind of stagger them a little bit. Like that one I'll put that way and this one up this way and then I'm gonna stitch right down the middle and then we'll come back I'm gonna do this one the same way and then we'll come back and start adding them in the journal well I didn't know if I wanted to stitch these in the cover or not or just put them in with an elastic but now I think I want to stitch them in okay. 
I am just putting my first signature up here and I'm going to poke three little holes. <laughs> I don't, I'm not really measuring anything or worrying about it being perfectly straight. I'm just poking holes. Go ahead and clip it just so that I don't let it move too much. I want to know in the comments who gets everything pulled out on their desk and just has a big mess when you get through crafting. I do. Okay, I'm thinking, let's see. Now I'm gonna do the little thing on the inside. I started to say I wanna do a bow on the outside, but I don't. I'm gonna put a little bit of lace on the outside of these. Oh, it's so hard to find your hold in this material. And I'm just stitching this in just like I would any other type journal. Now stitching signatures in on this type small journal is a little bit fiddly. So if you don't want to stitch them in, you can, you know, glue the front and back covers or you can put the elastic around them like I was talking about. But it can be done. It's just a little fiddly. I'm going to leave that a little bit long. We'll save those pieces since I had too much there. Alright, so that one is stitched in. Okay, looks good. Now we just need to stitch this one back here in. And I am just making it even with the other one. And then I'll poke my holes and we'll stitch, stitch this one in the same way. Okay, we have those stitched in. And I think this is cute cute okay we need to either trim some pieces or we can fold them back some of them I'm gonna trim with this just want a little decorative edge so that one I think I'll just fold and let it be a little tuck let's see I'm just going to look at them like this. That way I don't have to try to measure each one. Those I'm just going to trim off. That one I'll fold different. I don't mind if they stick out a little bit. That doesn't bother me. Let's see. That one we need to just fold a little bit more. So we need to cut this off first. Let's just do the decorative edge on it. Now, you could have measured all these and trimmed them all off before you stitched everything together. This is just the way I did it, but it can be done different ways. It doesn't matter. Okay, we're folding the paper bag over. This one I'm going to fold over. And this one I'll trim off those two. And I don't mind that sticking out a little bit right there. I may trim one or two off a little bit more, but that, that's fine with me. All right, so that is that little journal. Isn't that cute? Now, I'm going to put some lace on the end here, and then we're going to decorate the front. I'm not going to do anything to the inside of these because, you know, when somebody gets them, they may want to decorate them themselves. So I'm not going to do a lot to the inside. I may do one or two little pockets or something like that, but it's just going to be a little junk journal that you can either gift or you can keep in your purse. And just make your notes and things in there. Ooh, I thought about this. This might be pretty. Let's see. Oh, that will wrap around just right. Yeah, I don't mind that. Okay. Let's put our glue on there. Right, now to glue burlap, you're going to need to have your little spatula and probably going to need to clip it for a little while because burlap is a little bit tougher to glue than just regular fabric. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. And it doesn't matter if it's real even because I can always trim it again or fray it. I'm just holding this while I trim. Now it's starting to catch. 
Now I have these little pieces from Blue Fern and let's see this is an older collection sorry I just had a sneezing fit so I had to cut all that out so I think I'll put this down and then maybe something else not sure okay, I think I'll put a piece of an old book page behind it put that down I want this a little bit jagged so I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my Tim Holtz tool here and I'm gonna rough this up This, I, I don't know if they still even make anymore. It's a distress tool. Um, I will look and see, and if I can find it somewhere, I'll link it. But it just distresses the edges. Some people don't like that, but I do. And this is a very thick paper, so I think it looks better if it's distressed. Put it the right way up, Edith. That can go there. And then I need a little bit of something right there. Okay, let's just go into our little scraps that we've got here. These are my tiny, tiny scraps I've got. And sometimes I can find just the right piece for that. That is not. That needs to go on my Christmas. Okay, I have lots of things going on here, and I have no clue if that's all that I'm going to put down or that I'm going to put down any of it. But I have this piece of very, very vintage trim. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and glue that book page down because I know I want that on there. The other pieces I'm not so sure of. Okay, I think we might want the, that there. I'm going to put that piece of trim down and then we'll put this piece down right there. Just making a little cluster to give it a little bit more interest. Right. See if I've got that straight ish. Okay, then I have this little vellum bird that I thought about putting on there because that has a, a blank area. Put that right there. I also have this little flower. It's just a little flower that come out of a, I don't know, a collection of some kind. And I thought about that bow, but I'm not sure about that. That may be a little much. All right, I'm going to grab my Barely Arts glue. Oh, good news. We have Barely Arts on the way. Lots and lots of it. So I'll put that bird right there. And I'm going to ink the flower up a little bit to give it a little bit of dimension. We'll try to tuck it in somewhere. Whoops. Or throw it on my desk, one or the other. Let's tuck it in right there. Okay. Then I have just a little piece of, I have no clue what this is. This came off of a piece of trim of some kind. And I thought about putting that right there to make it look like the bird is actually holding on to that trim. I don't know. It's got, this paper has a little pink in it. The cover has a little pink in it. Right now it's, it's sticking to my fingers. Yeah, let's just do it. Just try it. All right, we put it out away from the bird because I didn't like it right up at his mouth. That didn't look too cute. Now, I need to decide if I want that on there or not. I don't think so. I think what I want on there instead is a couple of little tiny flowers. <clears throat> See if I can find the right ones. Okay, I think that'll work. And then I have these little tiny wooden butterflies, and I think I'm going to put one of those on there. Let's start gluing these first. OK, 
Okay, then I'm just going to grab, oops, they're falling out everywhere. Okay, little tiny butterfly, and I'm going to put, let's see, what other color? Well, I'm just going to put some, trying to decide. I don't even think I'm going to color it. I think I'm just going to put it down like it is. If I do decide to color it, I can always come back and put a little color on top of it. Later on. Now, do you think we need a little word right there, or is that going to be way too much? I think we got enough words on there. So there is that little journal. Now, you can tie these if you want with some twine or string. Uh, we could put a piece of this around it. I'm not going to do it right now while it's still wet, but we could always put a piece of twine around there, or we could put some seam binding around it. You know what? I think I'll put seam binding around this when the front dries. I'm going to wait till the front dries and then I'll put some seam binding on it and that'll be its closure. Okay, we're going to lay that one aside and let it dry. I'm going to probably put the other ones together off camera and then we'll come back and we'll decorate the front. We have these stitched together and this one I just did one signature in there. And then this one, I did the two little signatures. And they look uneven, but this one actually has some paper in it that's a little bit taller than this one is. That's why they look that way. But we're ready to decorate the front of these. We'll do this one first. I'm going to put some of this, what I call, raggedy lace on here. So there is our lace on. And then I have this little piece of vintage lace that I'm going to cut around that flower and put down there. I'll glue it down there and then I think I'm going to put this on top with maybe a word or something. Okay, that's down. And then I'm going to put this down. It has that yellow flower in it. Kind of like it's on the front. It's not exactly, but it'll work. And I'm just inking around it in some blue ink. Just to help it blend. So I think we'll add that right there. And then we'll put a word up here. And then we will tie this together with some seam binding. And this little piece will be finished. Isn't that cute? Okay, I'm just going to put this one on here and it says happy. And I'm going to ink it in some blue just so that it'll blend with the other. And I didn't even put any extra glue on my little tool there. I think that might be all that we do to that one and then we'll just tie it with some seam binding and I'll do that as soon as this dries. So I'm going to lay this one aside. Oh, and I just used some blue uh, baker's twine to stitch that together. Now on this one, this one's going to be pretty simple probably. I think I will put some of this lace. Then I am going to put this piece of book page and I'm inking with tumbled glass that's what I have inked my winter journal in so put this down I'm just going to go ahead and use this since I have it open so press that in so that it kind of looks like part of the background page and then this is a little piece that I just cut out of uh, an old 6x6 paper pad. So we're going to put her down right there. She's like a snow princess. Okay. And then I have this little word that says dream. And I cut this out of the paper collection from Hello Susan. And we're going to put that down right there. And then, of course, you know I want a little bit of bling on this trim right here. Don't think I want to go all the way. Let's see. I'll cut it off. I don't think I want that much. Okay, and that is that one other than putting some seam binding around it. And again, I'll wait till all this dries before I do that. Alright, there are our little, three little mini journals. 
I love them. Love, love, love them. I don't know which one I like the best. I like all of them. <laughs> all right, I'll try to get you some close-up shots and uh, some good photos of these with the seam binding on it as soon as everything dries. And we will talk to you guys later. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Bye-bye.